Good afternoon. Welcome to our final uh, Lenten service for this year. Uh, this is our last midweek, midweek service and um, we are going to continue with our series that is called Making Change. And this last uh, session or last service, we will talk about change of plans. I will start by talking, um, or I will begin the service with opening dialogue. And since I am the last, the only person here, uh, I'm going to read it just by myself. I invite you to take a moment of silence to open our hearts and minds to receive the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We see Jesus walking ahead on the road. He leads us toward Jerusalem. We follow, but are very afraid. He says, the Son of Man will be handed over. We understand nothing about all these things. He says, the prophet's words will be fulfilled. We hear him talk of suffering and death. Forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52. Prophet Isaiah says, See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so married was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals, so that so he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second uh, reading or the gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark. Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 32 till 34. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, 
we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit upon him, and flog him, and kill him. And after three days, he will rise again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Changing plans. We don't like to change plans, particularly after we spend lots of time uh, planning. Uh, but many times when we plan, we forget that God's plan for us are different. God's ways are not our own. We expect a conquering king and hero, but Jesus instead leads us down the road to Jerusalem and humbles himself on the cross. God changes our plans and replace, replaces them with a love broader and deeper than anything we could imagine. The Jews in Jesus' time, and until now, they have different, I, different, different messianic idea. They had different vision of the coming Messiah that differs than Christianity. This plan or vision of the coming Messiah uh, handed them to see Jesus as the true Messiah. By the way, in this meditation or reflection, I am not criticizing the Jews here. I am just only highlights the differences between Judaism and Christianity and explain how their plan or their messianic, messianic idea differs than God, God's messianic idea. So let me start and explain how this is, the differences. The term Messiah, uh, in English, Christ, uh, in Greek language, the language of the New Testament, is Christos, but in Hebrew, is the term Mashiach. Mashiach liter literally means the anointed one, and refers to the ancient practice of anointing king or anointing kings with oil when they took the throne. The Mashiach is the one who will be anointed as king in the end of the days. That is according to Judaism. So, and they have specific criteria for the Messiah. For the, Mashiach. the Mashiach or the Messiah will be a great political leader descendant from King David. We find that in the book of Jeremiah. In Isaiah, the Mashiach will be well versed in Jewish law and observant of its commandments. He will be a charismatic leader, inspiring others to follow him or follow his example. He will be a great military leader who will win battles for Israel. And according to Jeremiah, he will be a great judge 
who makes righteous decisions. But in Judaism, is there something very specific about the Messiah? He will be a human being, not a God or demigod or other supernatural being. No, a human being. So what will the Mashiach do? Before the time of the Mashiach, there shall be war and suffering. We find this in the book of Ezekiel. The Mashiach will bring about the political and spiritual redemption of the Jewish people by bringing them back to uh, Jerusalem. Find this in Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Hosea. He will establish a government in Israel that will be the center of the all world government, both for Jews and Gentile. And you find, you find this in the book of uh, Isaiah. He will re rebuild the temple and reestablish its worship. That is also Jeremiah. And also in Jeremiah, he will restore the religious court system of Israel and establish Jewish law as the law of the land. Christianity has something similar to the Messianic Jews, or sorry, to the uh, characteristic of the Messiah that is found in Judaism, but with something highly different also, or significantly significantly uh, different. Well, like in Judaism, Christianity believed that the Messiah should come from the tribe of Judea, or sorry, Judah, descendant of the King David, born at Bethlehem, arrived before the destruction of the second temple. Yes, they agree with that. Uh, but they also believe that the Messiah would present himself by riding on a donkey you find this in Zechariah. But the, the most important difference between, between Christianity and Judaism is that the Messiah would be tortured to death. You find it in Psalm 22. Messiah's life would be matched a particular description including suffering, silence, at his arrest and trial, death and burial in a rich man's tomb, and of course, resurrection. You find this in Isaiah 52. Uh, so you can see that the Jews had a different vision or plan or expectation of the coming Messiah but God had totally different plan. Totally different plan. So what, we, what would we do when God's plan is different than ours? What can we do? Sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we want to know God's plan now. We want God to put God's plan on the table in front of us, and we want to discuss this plan with God. This is not the case. That because in Isaiah 50, 55, we read, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God, let, God lets us know in 
explicit and clear terms that God's thoughts and ways are way, are way higher than ours. We weren't designed to understand God's ways when bad things happen in our lives. As now we are facing coronavirus pandemic, we, it's hard for us to know why God allows this pandemic to happen. We don't know. So it's hard to understand God's thought. Maybe later on, later on, God's plan will unfold. But because we are human beings, when God is meddling in our life plans, even though with good intentions, we don't understand why. Sometimes we can't feel God's presence and believe and believe God abandoned us. Take comfort in knowing he will not desert you or forget about you. God's, God is simply not ready to reveal God's plans. But believe me, in the right time, God will open your eyes to see God's plan for you. So, while we are waiting to, to see God's plan for us unfold, what shall we do? The answer comes from the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 21. And Job said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. You know the story of Job. You know how much he struggled, he suffered physically. He had severe uh, sores in his body. Uh, he lost his family. He lost his will, but he, he did not lose his wife, which is good. In the midst of that pain and suffering, he said, may the name of the Lord be praised. That is similar to the Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians. He wrote his letter while he was in a prison, suffering. And uh, he told and encouraged the Philippians to rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice and praise in the Lord and praise the Lord even when your life is difficult. Rejoice in the Lord even when you are locked down in your home, not allowed to leave your home because of coronavirus. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice because the Lord will never leave you. Rejoice because when you praise the Lord, you, are, you will be transformed. Sing to the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, because our Lord is with you, fighting coronavirus. Are you in a place when you, when you, uh, are you in a place you never expected to be? Has God taken you on a path you never would have willingly? Chosen? I'm sure you already had planned 
uh, what to do during uh, this coming week. I'm sure many of you plan, uh, was planning to come to church for Palm Sunday and attend the Holy Week services and then rejoice uh, and celebrate Easter Sunday. But now you cannot do that. You can't. We don't have worship services. You are restricted to your home. I'm sure that some of you uh, plan to have family gathering to celebrate Easter. You can't do that. You find yourself in a place you never expected to be because of coronavirus. So take heart, take heart. God has not deserted you. God has not forgotten you. God hasn't made a mistake at all. God knows exactly what God is doing. God knows exactly what you need, what you need and where you need to be. So trust in the Lord. Hold on your faith. The truth that you need to acknowledge, the truth that you need to accept is God's life plan is always better than your plan. God is using coronavirus pandemic to test our faith. All of us are facing this test. Either you pass the test or you fail. And I pray that you will pass. How to pass this trial, how to pass the test. As I mentioned before, rejoice in the Lord and always rejoice. Praise the Lord always. Each day I am learning to surrender to God and to trust God alone to depend on God's strength to get me through each day and to truly mean it when I say the words, not my will, but yours be done. But sometimes when I feel down, I doubt God's plan for me. I doubt God's presence for this reason, my friend, I rely on scripture, I rely on my daily devotion and prayers which are my shield against any doubt, against any doubt. And I trust God's plan for me and for our church and for each one of you. I pray that the Lord will give you strength, give you wisdom, and give you patience in this time. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. My friends, I would like to end with prayer. So please pray with me. O oh God, our surprise, you offer so much more than our own limited plans and vision. You take our place, becoming our salvation through the cross. As we prepare for Holy Week, strengthen our hearts and minds to follow Jesus on the road to Jerusalem. When we betray like Judas, deny like Peter, and scatter like the disciples, forgive us bring us the promise of resurrection 
and a new life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.